Okay, so now that we have created a wireframe that basically shows the organization organization layout and structure of our site, um, we need to create a mock-up. So after the client has approved this, it looks good to them, then now we need to add the pretty in. So here we have really basic black and white. We don't have any images, no font styling, color, etc. Um, and we don't want to start coding until we actually get approval from the client that the site is the way they want it to look. So I'm going to have this in Photoshop, but I know I want to have a big background image and I went to unsplash.com and just searched for an image that would work. At first I really liked this, but the center of my website is going to cover up that mountain in the road a lot. And so the outside edges just didn't make sense to me. Same thing with this. These are too tall. And so we want something that is actually landscape. So this would actually work really well, but because right now I'm in the fall, I really like this picture. So I click the download button and it went into my downloads folder. And I need to make sure and put that in my project folder or my site root folder. Now what I usually do is create a folder in here called like originals or designer files. These are files that I wouldn't upload to the site, but I wanna make sure I keep this original photo intact. So I'll move that over. And now I'm going to use that in my mockup. So in Adobe Photoshop, and you could use Adobe Illustrator for this, but for me, I like to use Photoshop for the mockup because I'm using a lot of photos in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do File New and go to Web and choose a web size. And when I choose that web size, I originally created the wireframe as 1366 by 768. So if I go back into Illustrator, that's because I didn't really need to have this background showing a lot because it, I wasn't going to put a background image in here. But now I actually want the client to see what that big image in the background is going to look like. So in this instance, I'm going to choose web large. Now I'm going to uncheck art, artboards because they drive me bananas in Photoshop and I just hate working with them. So I'll probably love them in like a year, but right now I hate working with them. So I'm going to uncheck it and click create. Okay. So this is the same as our website. Oh, I must have been painting with a grass brush earlier. So this is our basic um, outline of our website. And uh, this represents the entire browser window. So our actual website is going to be 960 pixels wide. So I'm going to go down here to the rectangle tool and it might be hidden so click and hold on here to grab the rectangle tool and I want it to be black so I'm going to choose black well I actually have to choose black for the fill color and I'm just going to click once so that it creates a 960 pixel um, width rectangle now I can make it taller right here but I can also just stretch that out later so as you can see it looks really tiny now um, because I'm really going to try to show the client what the outside image will look like. Now you can choose whatever wrapper color you want in here and you might not even have a color in your wrapper but I like black. So I'm going to do command or control T and stretch out that entire wrapper and then hit enter or return. So I'm going to do a lot more to this so just stick with me. Um, you're probably thinking why is there a huge black box in the center? but I'm going to make it semi-transparent. So again, with the understanding that you're going to do your own styles. So I'll do file and do place embedded, and that's going to allow me to put my background picture. So where the heck is my project folder? It's on the desktop in layout one in the originals, and there it is. Now, later on, I'm probably going to open this um, in Photoshop and I'm going to blur it and I'm going to make it the proper size for my website. But for right now, I'm going to pop it in there and I'm going to bring it down so it's right at the very top and I'm going to drag that underneath the rectangle so that you can see, the client can see if the browser is really wide, what it's going to look like with that background image. Now, I actually do want to blur this because I'm probably in real life going to blur it in the background. So I'm going to click on that um, image and go up to filter and see how it says convert for smart filters, but you can't click on it. It's because it's a smart object. So I'll right click on there and choose rasterize. Now I'll go to filter and convert for smart filters. And it'll say whatever and just click OK. And then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. OK, so the benefit of doing a Gaussian blur is you can have a smaller file size and you make it look blurry and it looks really good um, without like having a massive load time. 
So I'm going to bring this down because I don't want it to be like crazy blurry, but I do want it to sort of be a little bit dreamy. There we go. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to grab that representative rectangle for the wrapper and choose to make it semi-transparent. All right. So this is where I'm going to actually start trying to show what what the um, the 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 site would look like. So I'm going to come in here and choose a picture. Let's see. Some kind of island location. Well, we can just do this and uh, I don't know because this is for the slideshow. So you want something that you can kind of crop to a really wide rectangle. So this is kind of cool. So I like this and I can crop that. So it's in France, so I can download that. Again, it's going to go to the downloads folder, so I can open that folder and open up my layout one folder and go to originals and drag that in there, etc., etc. Same process every time. So file, place embedded, and pop that photo in there. And I'm going to make it really big so that it actually fits the width of the wrapper. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because I'm actually going to crop the majority of this out. So once I get it to the size I want, I was holding shift while I did that so that it maintained the proportions. And I want to keep this part of it, so it's probably going to crop about here. So once I get it there, I can move it around. And when I get it to the right spot, um, I might want to make it a little bit wider because there we go. So I can hit enter return to make it accept that transformation. But obviously that doesn't look like a slideshow. So I'm going to turn it off and grab the marquee selection tool, rectangular marquee tool. And I think my logo is going to go here. My now is going to go here. So I think my slideshow is going to start about there and it's going to be about that wide. So it's pretty, you know, pretty long and narrow. So with that selected, I'm going to turn this layer on again and you can see that marquee is on that layer now. So anytime you do selection, um, it's going to apply to whatever layer you're on. So I could be on any layer, create a selection, then go to the layer I actually want to use it on and, and make sure I click it and then that selection will work on that layer. So now that I have a selected and I have my photo for the slideshow selected, um, I can come up here and move. Oops, that's going to move the selection too. So right now I don't have it centered the way I want. So just click this little square with a circle in it called add layer mask and that's going to mask it out. Now I'm going to click the link inside of here so I can click on this and move it the way I want it to go and it's moving the mask because I was on the mask layer. If I undo that I can click on the photo and the mask won't move and then I can move that photo up there. Okay so that looks like a pretty good um, um, slideshow so I can link it back up and leave it as is. So then it's just a matter of actually creating the font and showing them what the font would look like and you can put the logo if you have the logo. I'm just going to go to shapes and I can choose the ellipse tool. I can go to custom shape and choose a custom shape down here. Um, and if you can't see all these shapes you can do this and choose all and it will um, add all of those shapes in there. So I don't know I can just I'm just going to do this little bullseye. So let's pretend that was our logo and it's black because I had black. So I'm going to come in here and choose white because black doesn't look good. That looks like the target logo. So don't, don't put the target logo, but I'm going to choose text. It's green because that's what I had chosen earlier when I was in Photoshop earlier. So I can type, um, infinite. Oh, I actually really like that font. I love Helvetica. I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E, travel, okay. So I can double click in there, make it a lot bigger. I hate, I hate that logo now because it's like too heavy, but we don't have time for that. So change that if you want to change it. So I'm going to shift click to highlight both of those and get them right in the center. So if I'm starting to feel cramped, I can move that down. And I can drag my slideshow down. Make sure you have that link in the middle selected before you actually drag it down. So that gives me enough room for my um, text. 
So originally I did a um, navigation with buttons. So I'm going to do it here, but in truth, I would probably just do text buttons or text right here. But I'm going to go ahead and, and put the rectangle and I think I am going to make it black. And then I'm going to grab the text and type um, link. Now, if you wanted to, you could type home, but notice that I'm using special fonts now. I'm not just keeping it really generic because I want them to be able to see what it would look like. So if I put the word link in there, I think that's a little too thin. So I'll click on that font and change it from Helvetic Ultralight to regular. And there we go. So I can drag both of these. I can highlight both of them and then do Alt or Option and drag those again. And then I can keep doing the same thing. And man, it's hard to see that. So I'm going to zoom in. Move that a little bit out. Alt drag. Try to get it the same. So clearly these are too big. So you can go back through and remake all of the rect rectangles or make them smaller. But that's too much dang time for me. So I'm going to just do this. And if it became too, too, um, I'm going to apply it. If it became too small, then I would have to redo it. But for right now, it looks fine. And I'm probably going to group all of those in a folder called navigation. Okay. Navigation. Okay. Let's do logo. There we go. So let's move this one up a little bit. So it's a lot of readjustment, but we're really trying to make this look like what it would actually look like for the client. So I'm going to do the same things where I can type in here and do welcome to the site. And this is where I might change the font. And I'm going to do thin and make it a lot bigger. Welcome to the site. And for lorem ipsum, it's a little bit different with Photoshop. I can click and drag to create a paragraph. And I can go up to, let's actually change this font to like 14 and choose Helvetica regular. And now I can go up to type and do paste Lorem Ipsum. So that's going to paste some Lorem Ipsum for us and we can go into our character panel and I can adjust some line height and I can maybe adjust the size a little bit. And there we go. So again, it's just recreating again what we what you did in the mock-up, but this time you're trying to make it look good. So you want to give a full mock-up that that looks good for the client. We're running out of time for this video, so I'm going to go as much as I can, but I'm going to add a copy right here and events heading here, a line and some text. All right, so last but not least, you can add the copyright symbol. And what I would do is go and find the keyboard shortcut for copyright. And I'm going to do Mac. So if you're on a PC, type PC. So uh, uh, let's see, hold down the Alt key and type 0169. That's for PCs. So it's not going to work on a Mac. How do I type a symbol on a Mac? There's an actual keyboard shortcut, option G. Oh, there you go. See? So on a, a PC, you'll have to hold Alt and then type 0169. When you release the Alt key, it should type a, a copyright symbol. Um, if you're on a Mac, just do option G. So I'm going to click the text, just click once and then do option G and it does this copyright symbol. So we'll make that a little bit bigger, even though normally it would be really small, but just so that the client can see that we do have the copyright there. So there is the mock-up of our site. So again, we have a, a wireframe that just shows the structure and how things are laid out. And now we have a mock-up that shows it how it looks correctly.